my guess says the next decade will be payback for all that you have suffered. Next. You know, every time I get together with Donna Rigney, uh, there are two things that always happen. Uh, the first is the presence of God is tangible. I mean, it is strong. It's stronger now than the last time I interviewed you, Donna Rigney. Uh, and, and the second thing uh, is that you provoke me to jealousy. <laughs> I mean, this woman almost every day is going to heaven and getting revelations that are, every one of them has the potential to change your life forever. And you also hear what's going to happen in the future. For instance, in 2019, you knew what was going to happen in, in uh, 2020. What did you know? Well, uh, one of the times the Lord brought me into the spirit, he showed me his, the world, the, the whole globe, and his hand was resting on top of it. And he told me, he said, when my hand rests on the world, everything is in its place. He said, but if I just lift it off a little bit, chaos reigns. And I just saw his hand, you know, this part of his hand was still on the world, but just near his fingers, lift it up. He said, chaos reigns. He said, I'm telling you this because it's going to become a period of chaos, of strife, civil unrest, and many problems that are going to be coming to the world. And he said, I'm letting you know this ahead of time so you will not think that you doubted my word when I told you revival's coming that when you see all these problems, I don't want you to think you didn't hear me. Revival is coming. He told me that in July, July 30th of 2019. And, and, and what you've described was a perfect description of the year 2020. And then again, he spoke to me like a month and a half later on September 6th. He spoke to me again and he said to me, a world war, a war is coming to your land like you have never seen before. He said, it's going to be brother against brother. And I thought the Civil War was so bad. How can it be worse than the Civil War? And he said, it is going to be worse than anything you've ever seen. He said, Re remind my people to pick up their weapons. Their most powerful weapons are love and forgiveness. He said, I'm telling you this so that you will mobilize the troops. So I knew it was going to be a spiritual war that a lot of prayer was going to be needed. This was back September before we had any of the problems with the coronavirus, with the riots in the streets, and with all, all the election problems we've been having. I mean, it's almost an unreal time we're living in, Donna, where uh, 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 parents are against children, children against parents, brothers against sisters. I mean, even in your own house, mm -hmm. uh, on, on so many different issues. It's like we're in two different planets or something. So that was a perfect description. But the reason I have you here is because you live in the glory. You have a passion for everyone to live in the glory. For starters, describe to me what you see as the glory. What is it? All right. The Lord explained to me what the glory was, because I've encountered the glory and I have felt the glory, but you know, you want to know what it exactly is the glory. And in one day he said to me, he said, can you separate yourself from your humanity? And I said, no, because we're human beings. He said, in the same way, you cannot separate me from my glory. Wherever my glory is, that's where I am. My glory is my essence, my fragrance. It's who I am. My glory is the greatest blessing I can pour out on anybody. His glory, and when his glory falls on me, I, I'll just explain to you, it's, um, you know, we've had the anointing for many years, and that's a smearing with the Holy Spirit. It's wonderful. The presence of God is wonderful, and it's equipping to do the work that God has for us to do. The glory is like uh, the anointing on steroids. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the anointing magnified to the point where you are undone. The only way I can describe it when the glory's on me is 
His breath becomes my breath. Our hearts beat as one. Tears just flow down my face when I'm in the glory of devotion. I don't have to try to worship Him. Worship just flows out of my being. And this is what God's going to pour out on all flesh, this glory. I know I'm a forerunner in it. I know that He's giving me a foretaste of what's coming and that everyone is going to encounter this who's positioned in such a way to receive with faith, believing that God loves them, that God will touch them, and living a life that they're set apart for Him. And what I see, Donna, is the presence of God, the glory, has magnified so much more since the last time I saw you. I believe, like the Bible says, we're going to go from glory to glory, and it's going to keep increasing. Uh, Now, I have heard for years about soaking, uh, and that's uh, some people get on their back or their face, and they worship God, and they have beautiful music, and they just kind of soak in His presence and get filled with, with, with the anointing. But you have a term I've not heard before, soaking in the glory. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, it's very similar to soaking in the anointing, but it's soaking in that intensified love of God. Uh, The glory, the Lord told me this about the glory too, which will help you understand it, is the glory is like when God gives us a kiss. It's a kiss from God. We're receiving a kiss from God. So it's much more of a love relationship than soaking in the anointing. Soaking in the glory is you are soaking in the love and the approval, the, the wonder of God. It's, it's a, 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 in a communion, an intense communion with God. But it's not that you have to manufacture it or make it happen. It just pours effortlessly out of you. And that's what you're dedicated to teaching everyone to how to receive the glory and how to live in the glory. In fact, you make a statement that the glory is the solution to everything. Explain. Yes, the glory is the solution to everything. That's what the Lord has told me. You know, he said in Scripture, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you, all right? So if we seek His glory, we seek His love, His goodness, His presence, all right? Then what is there that will be lacking? He says, in my glory are the healings you need, the prosperity you need, all the blessings you need. Whatever we need, it's so right there when you're in the glory, because God's there. He's right there. It, so it's everything. All, it's also the difference is in the past, it might take a lot of meditating on the Word and prayer, hours and hours of prayer uh, and time. It seems to me that in the glory, it's instant. Exactly. Uh, it, when you're in the glory, the presence of God is on you so strong that your heart and His are one, so He will give you the prayers He wants you to pray for the things He wants you to do. You know it. You pray it, and it's done. Are you say this is payback time. <laughs> yes, that's what the Lord has told me, that we have gone through 2020. It was a horrible, horrible year. God did not do this. The enemy did this to us, and the Lord has shown me that We are in a time right now where He is going to cause the enemy to pay back what He has stolen from us, what we've lost. This is payback time. And He said it's not going to be one year of payback where great glory is going to be poured out on the world, where great, wonderful miracles, inventions, wonderful things are going to happen. He said it's going to be 10 years. I'm going to give my children 10 years for the one that the enemy robbed from them. Many people have suffered terribly, Sid, during this last year, terribly. They've lost loved ones. They've lost income. They've lost so much. And God says, I see it. I know it. And I'm going to pay you back. Well, you call it the payback of the good and the evil harvest. All right. This is this is after he spoke to me about the war and everything. Now, a few months ago, he spoke to me, he said, in the past, I told you that there was going to be a war coming to your land. 
to mobilize the troops. He said, now I'm telling you, a great harvest is coming. Get ready for it. And the, I asked him, how do we get ready for this? He said, with intimate fellowship with me, spending time with me, spending time in my glory and in my presence. That's how you get ready for this great harvest. And he said, it's going to be a harvest, not just of the good deeds my children have sown, but it's also going to be a harvest of the wicked seeds and the wicked deeds people have done in secret. That when, when you sow seeds in a garden, all of a sudden, you know, the seeds are under the dirt. No one sees. They don't know what seed you sowed. All of a sudden they start springing up and you see the plant, you see the fruit. He said, this is the hour when those things that were sown in secret are going to come to the surface and they're going to flourish, they're going to grow, and people, everyone's going to see whether you sowed something good or whether you sowed something evil. And my angels are going forth to harvest the good and people are going to re be rewarded and blessed for the good. And those things that were so wicked, evil things also are going to be exposed and people are going to be reaping judgment for those things they did. Donna, I keep hearing this word for myself, but this is for everyone. God told you, look for the suddenlies. He said, I'm going to be doing things suddenly, very sudden. He said, just like oh, when Jesus died, you know, he's in the, in the tomb and all his disciples are just heartbroken and they're afraid because they think they're going to get crucified too. They, they, and they're devastated. They, they felt like Jesus was their answer, their hope, and now he's gone. And so they're all hiding away and afraid. And all of a sudden, suddenly, Jesus rose from the dead. And everybody knew because it was suddenly that it was God. And God said in the same way, this is what I'm going to be doing in this hour, suddenly, I'm going to appear. Suddenly, I'm going to arise. Suddenly, I'm going to do miracles in ways people couldn't imagine. People are going to try to figure out, well, maybe it'll happen this way, that way. Uh-uh. God says, suddenly, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it in such a way that everybody knows I did it, and I will get the glory for it. Donna is going to pray for you to have daily encounters with God, just like she does. She says, anyone can do this. <laughs> that means you, me. Be right back. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Donna Rigney is taken to heaven often, and she has revelation from Jesus that when she shares, it changes everything about you. For instance, Donna, you had an encounter in the glory, and Jesus said, and boy, would you like Jesus to say this to you, you are protected. Uh, I was sitting on, in the spirit on the top of the mountain. Often he brings me to this place I call the mountain of intimacy. And we sit together on a seat overlooking the world. And as we were sitting there, um, demons were climbing up the mountain, and as they got near the crest of the mountain, they started throwing grenades at me. And angels came, and they picked up the grenades, uh, they handed them to Jesus, he took the pin out of the grenades, and then gave them back to the angels, and the angels threw them back down the mountain at the demons, and the demons left. And he showed me, he said, when you're sitting in my presence, when you're in my glory, that's how protected you are. And I knew that the pins that he, that he took out of the grenades was the only bit of truth that was in those missiles, that the, in those grenades that the enemy was trying to throw at me. So there was a little bit of truth. You know, the enemy uh, fabricates things. He threatens us. So we hear, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. This will happen to your husband or your finances, whatever. And the Lord took that one little bit of truth that was in there. He says, I'll take care of the little bit of truth that's in it. 
and you're fine. I'll take care of everything. You don't need to worry about a thing because you're resting, abiding in my shelter of my wing and you're abiding in my glory. And I will cause what the enemy said he was going to do to you to come right back on him. We're, everyone knows, we're in a pandemic of Ooh. coronavirus. But you see a greater pandemic coming. <laughs> Tell me about that greater <laughs> pandemic. He says, oh, yeah, the enemy's trying to spread this wicked virus huh? with contagion. Watch what I do with the glory. I'm going to spread my glory with contagion. He said, but you're not going to have to touch somebody or breathe on them or cough on them for this to spread. He said, this glory is going to be spread just with people looking in your eyes, people seeing you on the internet, on television, on a phone call. He says, you're not even going to have to tangibly touch somebody, but my glory is going to spread even greater and wider and further than the coronavirus. Uh, Donna, you hear God so clearly. How can we encounter God that clearly? Give us a few pointers. Okay. Uh, I think the key really is surrender, is living a life of surrender. Uh, you know, being holy means being set apart for God and to live your life for Him, where He's the most important thing and you're seeking Him all the time. You have time alone with Him. I do that. I dedicate every day time, special time. Well, what do you do when you're alone with God? All right, what do you personally What I do personally is I will go into my prayer room, I put on my soft Christian worship music, and I, I sit alone with him. I get my notebook and my pad ready because I know he's going to talk to me. I've learned in the past when I've had a not so good morning and go to s sit with him, I think, oh, I'm not going to hear God today. And I heard him say, as clear as anything, where's your pen and your pad? because I wasn't expecting he was going to talk or I would hear him. And he, he corrected me. And as you worship, as, you know, as you play the soft music and you're loving him and worshiping him and expecting that he's going to talk to you, uh, you know, knowing my father loves me and he wants to talk to me. He sent his son to die on the cross so I could have intimate fellowship with him. Of course he's going to talk to us. And for years I was seeking God and trying to hear from him and I, I couldn't hear him. And what I learned was I... He was always talking, but I wasn't recognizing his voice. So was, I learned to quiet myself, get rid of the distractions, focus on him, picture him, picture him there before me. Just, and then the first couple of words I would hear in my spirit, not outside me, but in my spirit, write them down. And then as I wrote them down, that helped my mind to focus. So I wasn't distracted thinking about cooking dinner or whatever. I'm just thinking about these words I'm hearing and writing them. And then he continues to speak and I continue to write and write. And that's how I learned to get all the revelations. And then as he would talk many times, he would bring me in the spirit into heaven, to hell, to different, to the mountain of intimacy, different places. He'll bring the greater your faith. I learned this too. The greater our faith is, the more he can show us. So to have faith that God will show me these things. Whatever God wants to show me, he'll show me because he's God. I'm not going to stop God by my unbelief. He'll give me the faith I need. And I pray, Holy Spirit, give me the faith I need for these encounters. Tell me about the flowers you saw being sent to earth. All right. This was recently. Recently, the Lord brought me back in the spirit. I had been there previously to this beautiful ballroom in heaven. And I saw all the saints Wonderful, wonderful. The, the great crowd of witnesses were all there and they're dancing and having a wonderful time. And I'm like, we're having a lot of stuff going on here on the earth. <laughs> How come you're having so much fun? And Jesus said to me, he said, the father is in complete control. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows what's coming. And they're laughing there and having a wonderful time. And then I see all these flowers. Now the father's sitting at the very end of this beautiful ballroom on his throne, but there's a mist over it, so I can't see him clearly. And there's beautiful flowers all over the floor in front of him at his feet. And, and then I saw the, some people from the crowd of witnesses go over, pick up a flower. They, they look carefully to find the flower they wanted, get the flower, smell it. 
hold it to their heart, and then they'd run to the other side of the, way far to the other side of the room where there was a balcony and throw the flower o- off the balcony. And I looked in the spirit and I could see people on the earth worshiping with their arms in the air, worshiping God, and those flowers were falling down upon them. And what I saw was that these flowers were covered in the glory. They're at the feet of the throne of God. They're the prayers. You're praying. I'm praying. We're praying. Everybody's praying. Those prayers are sending to God. Like they said, our prayers are held in bowls in heaven. He was showing me them like flowers in the great crowd of witnesses. And I believed that the people that were going over looking for the flowers were looking for our loved ones that have gone before us, looking for our prayers that we prayed, getting our prayer partnering with us. Oh, yes, I agree with this prayer and throwing it in. What the Lord showed me was the prayers are easily able to be answered because so many people have been praying and angels have been released to open the portals of heaven. So these flowers or prayers, answered prayers, easily would get to us. He said, the portals are open. He said, what I'm showing you is not what is coming. This is a now word. This is happening now. It's time to pray. Okay. It's time to release (laughs) that glory that you are filled with to give us a jump start in hearing God, in experiencing God, in even visits to heaven. Pray that right right now. All right. Lord, uh, just like when Paul said to Timothy, I long to come and lay hands on you and impart some gift to you. I say that to you, to everyone that's watching right now. I long to come and lay hands on you and impart, but I know by faith I don't have to lay hands on you. The Lord show me that this glory is contagious, that you can just receive it by watching, just by believing. So Lord God, I impart right now the love of God, the love for intimacy with you, the anointing for intimacy with you, and the wonderful glory of God to fall from heaven upon all my brothers and sisters, all over the world, that you will saturate them with your glory, that they will come to know you, Lord God, and your great love for them. And that as they encounter your glory, they will feel your kiss from heaven. Thank you, Lord. Call now and get Donna Rigney's brand new anointed book, The Glory of God Revealed, and her powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Soaking in the Glory. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9730. As you read Donna Rigney's powerful book, The Glory of God Revealed, you will be amazed at the wonderful things that she saw and learned on her many spiritual encounters with the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit in heaven. Through her book, you will learn how you too can access the glory in your life. Find out how the days ahead will be marked by God's glory. Discover how miracles, signs, and wonders will become commonplace in the glory. Understand how to enter into glory encounters with God every day. You will also receive Donna Rigney's anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, Soaking in the Glory. In her audio teaching series, Donna reveals what the glory is and how to encounter it. The first CD explains exactly what the glory is, so I explain that clearly. Also, I show the difference between the glory and the anointing. The second CD, I teach about how you can access the glory. And then the third CD is all about the benefits that the Lord has taught me through scripture and through prophetic words. And I give the words of what the benefits are for our soaking in the glory. Begin to hear God's word more clearly. Find out that all negative feelings and pain must leave. Gain supernatural wisdom. Experience healing and miracles. Receive your prayer language. Become more loving, patient, and kind. Experience an increase in your faith. Throughout this series, Donna releases anointed prayers of activation and impartation. God is getting ready to pour out His glory. Will you be prepared to receive it? Don't miss out on getting Donna Rigney's brand new anointed book, The Glory of God Revealed, and her powerful three-part audio CD teaching series, Soaking in the Glory. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9730. 
Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9730 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.